let's talk about more redacted news or kind of redacted news. There's this clip from this podcast I listen to called How Long Gone. One of my favorite podcasts out there. It's a very niche podcast. It kind of operates maybe in the same sort of area that I operate in, in terms of culture, cultural commentary, but it's hosted by two white guys, Chris Black and Jason Stewart. So they have a very, you know, different perspective on life and they love indie bands. They, they say rap music is a bit rusty and, you know, whatever, you know, they have different taste in my eyes but a lot of the cultural things they speak about i like and i'm a fan of and interview some good people when they you know they sometimes have a tendency to interview too many conde nas people and media elites that gets a bit boring but when they interview actual people who are working and you know living life and whatever it may be they make for some very interesting interviews the recent interview that they have here with this photographer called jason nosito and if you don't know who jason nosito is he had a um I kind of know his work briefly from like the early era of like Vice. If you remember, there was a, a particular style of photography in that Vice era, Terry Richardson era, where it was kind of like direct sort of like flash to the face. Um, there wasn't a lot of touching up. It was kind of like documentary style of photography. I may have actually have an old Vice somewhere here. So I have a, yeah, so yeah. So it's kind of like maybe kind of this era of Vice, right? Where they had really cool pictures and shit. Um, and it was all kind of weird documentary uh, style of pictures and scene reports. Anyway, Jason Nosito is really cool. Check him out, right? Anyway, he gives an interview with them, um, How Long Gone, and I'm going to play this clip for you because I think this is absolutely hilarious. And I think this clip basically, um, for me, illustrates why I think it's somehow really important in a weird way to maybe grow up with a, in, in a family where you're kind of allowed to do what you want. You're kind of a latchkey kid. You can kind of drink early, do drugs early, because I think it obviously can go two paths. You can end up being like a lifelong drug or drink, you know, drug and alcohol addict, or you can go another path and you get that stuff out of your system very early on so that when you become old and you become a parent or you just, you know, maybe you're instilling some wisdom into some other young people, you can kind of speak from a point of knowledge and you can also approach it from a very chill, laissez-faire, relaxed point of view. You're not like all tight about it and, oh my God, I don't, can't believe you did that. You're like, no, you know, I smoked this, I did that, I did whatever back then. I know how it feels, but actually it's not the coolest thing to do. After a while, it kind of gets boring. You can kind of address it from a really informed point of view and the kids would kind of get it. But I do think there's something about being born that way or being brought up that way. And this guy has a ridiculous upbringing, ridiculous upbringing. Here when he started, here when he started taking drugs, this is legitimately blew my mind. I've never heard. And again, I listen to Joey Diaz and stuff, right? And he has some very crazy stories. And this guy sounds even crazier. So this is Jason Nosito on the How Long Gone podcast. This is episode number um, 483. Hear this. Now, were you, were you ever, were you ever straight edge? Oh yeah, yeah, I was straight edge from 13 to 16, you know, and like mm -hmm. before that wasn't straight edge. I got high really up, you know, like I started using when I was like nine years old. Nine years, nine years old. Started using what? Ninja Turtles? <laughs> yeah, I had, I had a kind of strange upbringing. Uh, okay. I have like my, like my dad had nine kids in the end and like maybe 10, okay. you know, we don't know. <laughs> and then, uh -huh. um, but, you know, I grew up in sort of a feral situ, you know, like mm -hmm. kind of. Okay. And my mom worked at a bar, so it was a little bit like there was that kind of situation. Everything was on. everything was available. Everything was available. Exactly. To you. Everything was available. And like, um, and I just landed on, you know, something early. And then by the time I was like 13, I had probably, I had probably, I had gotten kicked out of middle school and like to put into this crazy publicly funded school that who was what the guy who was running the school had embezzled all the money. He was embezzling all the money. So you show up to the school and there was like Anyway, you get the gist, right? He started taking drugs at nine years old. He became straight edge when he was a teenager. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Taking drugs and doing and and drinking alcohol at nine is a bit excessive. But I do remember when I was growing up, especially in the scene, there was a couple people. I wish I remember her name. And it, it escapes me now, but she's very successful. There's this girl that we met in the scene who came about pretty, she was kind of new in the scene when I kind of was kind of, you know, involved and whatnot. And let's say we were 21, 22 then. She came around and she probably was 
between the ages of like 15 and 17 or 18. And I remember when she came about, she had a very kind of like mature and grown up, you know, vibe about her. And clearly because, you know, guys kind of liked her also because she looked mature also more than their age. A lot of guys were trying to hook up with her, even though she was, you know, between the ages of 15 and, and flipping 18. I wasn't clearly. Um, so don't get me flipping counsel for that shit. But I remember this girl and she was always very, very mature, very, very, you know, had a kind of head screwed on and she'd party a lot also, but just kind of came about it from a very kind of chill point of view. Then so many years kind of, trying, you know, many years after the fact, you look back now She's living in LA with her partner. She kind of is a very successful photographer, I think, or stylist or something in that kind of world. But from what I last heard, she's sober. And she's way younger than, well, she's younger than I am, right? And she's completely sober. And she probably gave up all that stuff a long time ago. And I think a lot of that came from the fact that, and remember when I spoke to her before, she had parents who like went to Glastonbury, went to other music festivals, were basically hippies, and they essentially let her do what she wanted when she was younger. So she got all that freaky, druggy, drinky shit out of her system very early on. And also being a, a, a girl that kind of had to kind of, you know, navigate through life by herself, she also became really adept and, and able and and okay to like hang around because also I remember she was kind of one of the only girls I remember being in the scene who seemed to kind of hang around with guys easily she never really kind of got uncomfortable she knew how to banter she knew how to chill had to turn up whatever just like a chill girl without being overly flipping tomboyish she kind of really knew how to kind of hang and a lot of that I kind of would imagine is basically being on your own having to navigate the streets quote unquote right figuratively and having to kind of you know make sure you're okay out there and when you kind of stumble across my little hipster scene of guys with like white socks on, it's not much of a challenge, really. You know how to kind of, you know, keep this one over there, keep this one here, arm's length, you know, run away from this one. It's a bit easier to do. So I'm kind of wondering if there's actually some benefit to growing up like that, because in my end, I didn't. I had my first, you know, sip of flipping alcohol when I was maybe 23, maybe right? 23, 22, when I first got involved in the scene, really. And even before that, when I actually was in the scene before, I'd go to these parties and these indie nights, and I'd be there in the back drinking my flipping apple juice. Like, I, I wasn't involved at all, right? Because at that time, I kind of was, you know, I kind of grew up in a kind of super strict sort of like Christian household, and I, I kind of was believing it myself. So I never really got into the whole drug and drinking thing really until really late. But then I also think I kind of credit drinking and doing drugs really late in life quote unquote at like 22 onwards i kind of also quote i kind of also credit that with the fact that i'm not a drug and flipping you know booze uh addict now i think that's the main reason because i've got a very addictive personality so i think if i would have started earlier i probably had a would have more of an addiction but because i started so late is and because i had so many outside interests i was running a lot i was playing sports all the time i was skating i never really had time to kind of get fucked up all the time uh, and especially on top of that i was also going to church all the time so there was never a point where i could get fucked up because i had all these obligations so that made me kind of like you know keep on the straight and narrow but i can't imagine the guy you know that because I, I, I thought i was immature at flipping 20 i can't imagine what i would be like at 9 13 15 16 like these guys are out here doing that stuff. So big up Jason Osito. I think that's another way to flip and live and have some sort of upbringing. But I don't know, man. I think, yeah, even Uche is saying in the chat, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm glad I got all that wild shit out of my system early on. Instead of late. Exactly. I think there's something to it. There really is something to getting that stuff out of your system early on. Because I feel like I had it. I feel like I had the taste of that debaucherous lifestyle. I had it at the right time. I think if I would have waited longer, like if I would have had my first sip of alcohol, at like 25 or 26 it would have been an issue but because i had it at 22 ish age it was just the right time for me to have my like freak out stages of that like four year run where i was kind of promoting parties and hanging around in dalston and shoreditch and hackney every single day that was that like, my little four or five year run and then after that it kind of got boring it kind of got lame and then you kind of got over it um, and that's a basic about it. I think that's kind of important to have as opposed to just living under the strict doctrine that you can't do anything. And then when you do something, you kind of go crazy. I'm not really too sure. I'm not too sure. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. big up Chris Brito. Big up Chris Brito. Big up Chris Brito in the chat. Big up, big up, big up. Nice to see you, my friend.